This video explores how to use formulas in an Excel spreadsheet. Specifically, it's designed to assist the general chemistry students at Portland Community College create a spreadsheet that will save them time in identifying an unknown chemical compound. In lab, they will be heating their unknown compound in a crucible and calculating the mass loss due to evaporation. The unknown is the hydrate of one of the compounds listed here. There are seven possible hydrates for each compound. You can see all of the possible hydrates for copper 2 sulfate listed here. If we were to look at all the possible hydrates for these four compounds, we would have a total of 28. You will be using the molar mass values I have entered in these cells. Take a moment to pause the video and copy this portion of the spreadsheet into your spreadsheet. To create our table of percent water for all the possible hydrates, we first want to create a column of the four compounds. I can use the keyboard shortcuts control C to copy and then control V to paste. In the row above, I'll put the number of water molecules for each of the different hydrates. We will be referencing these numbers in our actual formula, so I'm careful not to add any text to the cells that may interfere with the calculation. Now let's create our first formula. Communicate to Excel that you are doing a calculation by inserting an equal sign. My advice, when you first start using Excel, when in doubt, put a parenthesis. After reviewing the order of operations and with some practice, you may be able to simplify the formulas we are going to do further. We'll be using this formula here to calculate the fractional water mass. You could do it in percent. You would just need to multiply by 100. First, we want to calculate the total mass of water in the compound. For copper 2 sulfate monohydrate, that would be the mass of water, which I'm going to use the mass in this cell here, and I could reference that cell by either typing in C8 or just clicking on that cell. Now, even though we know it's only one water molecule, I'm going to multiply using an asterisk by the number in the row above. Now, in Excel, when you drag a formula using the black cross or plus symbol, you will also be changing the cell reference at the same time. So you can see if we click on this formula, this one referenced C8. When we moved the formula one column over, it now references D8. We don't want to change the mass of the water in C8, so what we need to do is add a dollar symbol to freeze the column and the dollar sign to freeze the row. Now if we were to go back and drag the formula across, you could see it is using the mass of water times the number of water molecules to correctly determine the mass of water 
in each of the different hydrates. But we want the fractional water mass. So this formula is still incomplete. I'm just going to delete those cells for now. And let's go back and complete our formula. We need to divide by the total mass of the compound. Since we're working with copper 2 sulfate, I'm just going to put a parenthesis and enter in that cell. But again, that cell will remain fixed. So we add our dollar signs. And then not only do we need the mass of the copper 2 sulfate, we also need the mass of whatever water is present since it is a hydrate. To save time, I'm just going to copy that water mass we already calculated. You could leave the parentheses or remove them in this case. Now here is where the power and time-saving ability of Excel really comes into play. I'm going to highlight the cell with the formula and hold the cursor of my mouse over the bottom right-hand corner of the cell until it changes to the small black plus symbol. Then I'm going to click my left mouse button, hold it down while dragging the contents across the row for copper 2 sulfate. When I release the button, the cells have automatically calculated the fractional water mass for all seven possible hydrates for copper 2 sulfate. But there is a problem. We could not possibly have this level of precision in our laboratory. So what we need to do is give a little more reasonable of a value. I highlight the cells where I want to format the numbers. I'm going to do the whole table just because it will be convenient. I right click. Once this menu pops up, I click on Format Cells, then go to Number and then I can change the number of decimal places shown. I'll assume that we'll have either five decimal places or less of precision just from what I know about the experiment. When I click OK, now we have numbers that are a little more reasonable as far as fractional water mass. Let's do one more from start to finish and then I'll let you do the last two on your own. Let's start again with the equal sign parentheses. I'm going to click on the cell referencing the molar mass of water and I'm going to fix it with the dollar signs. You could also type in 18.02. Then I'm going to multiply that by the number of water molecules in magnesium sulfate. Then I need to divide by the molar mass of magnesium sulfate which again will remain fixed as I drag the contents of the formula across. To that, again, I will add the mass of the water for that particular hydrate. When I press Enter, I have the fractional mass of water for magnesium sulfate monohydrate. I can click the cell and drag the contents across to get the remainder of the values for all of the magnesium sulfate hydrates. You may want to do a few other things. You can center the values on the table. You probably want to give it a border. And now I'll leave you to complete the remainder of the spreadsheet as well as personalizing it with your name and a title.